So the project is about the, the heritage that exists over the water in Norwich, the northern part of the city, the industrial heart of the city, where all the working men and women of the city you know, built the wealth of the city in the past and have endured many changes, many, you know, the slum clearances, the bomb damage, but, but it's, a, it's a heart of the city where the, the, the weavers live, the shoemakers set up their factories. And so it's a story of the northern half of the city, which is a heritage that isn't told and represented so much. When you think of Norwich's heritage, you think of the other side of the river and the cathedral and the castle. But we're focusing on Anglia Square, which is a, a shopping centre in the middle of this heart of the city and using that as our inspiration to look at how the area has changed over the past and how the spirit of it has endured. It's really looking at a, at a modern day present issue, the redevelopment of Anglia Square in the context of the entire history of that region of the city. When we got the funding it was two days after they'd made the decision, so seven votes to five in the council, to approve some very controversial development plans. So it's a very present issue. What do we want that area to be? and there's lots of people who are opposed to the development and lots of people who say it's just got to be knocked down. So there's opinions flying around all over the place about what to do with this part of the city. So we thought we would wade into that controversy and, and just show some historical context in order to help people to get a feel of the place over time so that they were more informed in thinking about you know, what do we want from this part of the city. So it's really, a, the political aspect is really a provocation to people to think about the area and not just think about now, but think about then, and think about spirit of the place and what that therefore deserves to be, whether we like new plans for the development or not. Oh, look, are you called Aubrey Tippertoes? Go whatever way you want to go. <laughs> the, answer, the answer's there, it's for you. Not hey. called Aubrey Tippertoes. <laughs> so what, what's going to happen this evening is we are, I mean, Jeanette, Jeanette and I are basically going to run the evening. We're going to be splitting eventually into our three groups the ones that you chose last time, and developing a strategy and a tactic for how and what we research. Um, I am very interested in the common lot, and um, I've been involved with the common lot for a while, and I love the sense of friendship and of the social occasions that the meetings bring. So I just wanted to stay involved really with the group so, um, during the research period so I can see where the project is going and how it's going to develop so that when we come to do the performance part, which is the part that I'm very much interested in, then um, that part I can know exactly what's brought us to that point and have a really good idea of what has driven us to come to Anglia Square, a love story, when we actually do the performance. And then, and then work out who's going to, yeah, you yeah. could do that. And then we need to have... I'm a member of the Common Lot. We were looking at what was the sort of, you know, a big issue in Norwich at the moment. And so, and, and obviously Anglia Square is a really big issue at the moment because of the, of the redevelopment. But it's also that part of Norwich over the water. It's a really, really rich history in that area. Also, for me, actually, the thing I'm most interested in is the people of Magdalen Street and Anglia Square, because I think it's a very different, very diverse group of people, quite different from the centre of Norwich and actually quite different from the part of Norwich where I come from, which is the Gone Triangle. So my name's Isaac, and I'm here because I want to learn more about interviewing and research and also more about the local area. I think the most interesting thing about the research so far is how many different approaches there are going on already. Um, people looking at geological maps of the area and then people talking about talking to people in pubs. You know, there's, it's already, there's such a range. It seems like it's going to be such a mind-boggling task to narrow it down, but I think that's going to be the fun. If you don't actually feel that by the end of the meeting, you know, the meeting has failed for you and we need to make sure that you don't feel like that. Why is it important to make theatre for, with and about people of a place? Because the depth of attachment and identity and expansion of idea of oneself and one's home all becomes all the more possible through the power of live theatre. That sounds ever so pretentious, but I do genuinely believe that. Are, are we controversial? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I don't set out to pr provoke. Well, I do set out to provoke reaction, but I don't set out to deliberately be a, you know, a polemicist. You know, to build an inclusive theatre, you, you have to talk to all sides. So, you know, there's no point in preaching to the converted or trying to change someone's mind who's never going to be changed. So I think we do try to expand, you know, 
our, our own minds in, in, this, in this attempt to be inclusive. And I think that maybe leaves us a little short on controversy because we're trying to include. But I hope we're picking subjects like Ketz Rebellion, you know, the history of immigration into Norwich, you know, these the, the radical women, you know, the, the Anglia Square, they're all, they're all resonant stories with now that have something to say about human stories and our political situation. And I think you can, you can say something without saying something. You know, if you come from a human, a human standpoint first, if you, if you, if you talk about human values and, and individual stories and the way in which the, the great moments of history have affected, you know, us as human beings. And I think you, you're inevitably political and possibly controversial, but it's not that we set out to be. So we're doing a research project, that's what you need to say. Yeah. Um, can I ask you one question on the mic? That's, yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. And, then you say, and, they, and you'll know, they'll know what it's about, or can my yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in the meantime, I think rather than have everyone on the mics, two or, one or two people could just be talking to people about the project if they engage. Yeah. If you felt you'd like to get involved in theatrical performance, please come along on that day um, at the Oxgum Chapel. Uh, so what are your opinions on Anglia Square? I love it. It's my home. It, 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 I walk through it three or four times a day to work, to shop. And it's a community. And could I get your opinions on the kind of proposed redevelopment? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yeah, really, really terrible. I mean, obviously, something needs doing, just not what's proposed. Yeah. I think it's um, a thriving, diverse community. And the, with regards to the redevelopment, it does need some redevelopment. I have doubts whether it will attain its um, uniqueness, if that makes sense, and give people that don't generally have a lot of money, yeah. options to buy things at a cut price. My name's Jackie, I'm the project manager for Anglia Square, A Love Story, and we have a production team that all work together. So that's Simon, our artistic director, Mags, our writer, Duncan, who leads the school's work, and Charlie, who is our musical director. We all know each other really well, know our strengths, and I think really enjoy working together. Yeah. What is your role in coordination, and what do you actually have to do on a daily basis? Uh, so coordination is whatever is needed at the time, as well as making sure that we're always planning ahead and thinking about, so for example, at the moment, the key focus is preparing for our launch. So we're coming to the end of the research phase of the project, and we're now preparing to share the research learning with the public and also recruit people from the local community to join a choir and be involved in the other creative outputs. So predominantly that is our performance in the city in July. Always, we have a very clear time plan of what we need to be doing at each stage of the year long project. And it's always making sure that you're balancing meeting immediate need as, as well as making sure that things are in place so that we can deliver what we need to do later on. Jackie Riquet is my right and left arm. Um, <laughs> Um, no, she's brilliant. She's brilliant. What more can I tell you? She's great. I mean, we, she's not only somebody who can get stuff done and speaks to everyone as if they're the most valued person in the world, but she's also a really good thinker and, and sees the strategic approach that we're trying to take. You know, if I come in with an idea, it's Jackie who, who kind of says, well, we can probably make it happen like this. You know, the Labour was that built us and the rad radicalism that's still in our DNA, then yeah. you need to come over here and... Exactly! Yeah, yes. that's what that we're was, saying. That was why I wrote it like that. Yeah, you know, no, it does work, it does do that. You co-wrote the play with Mags Chalkar. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how you devise a script. Well, we also had help from Isaac, who needs to mention his young, young chap who's just graduated from the UEA Creative Writing School. But yeah, me and Mags, I guess, were the main writers. How do we devise the script? I think... It's a case of being in the research process and understanding what is emerging as important. You know, what are the moments that are important in history? What are the stories we have to tell? What, what can't we leave out? I think that's the thing. You know, you, you have to make the decision about what you can't leave out. And by the time you've done that, you've got 
you know, more than you need to make a play. Need to see you. What a lot of people. <laughs> Are you all right there all together? <laughs> Not late for the party, are we? Has he been running at the mouth again? He does go on a bit. Yeah. Excuse me, Hendrix, you can't really. But his heart is in the right place. This is an outrage! Oh, something, Mr. Oh. Mayor! We'll take it from here. I'm stumped. And I'm cross. We come all the way from Magdalen Street. I'm Mags Chowcraft Islam, and I'm a writer on the project. Uh, there are a few writers, but the main two is Simon and I, and we're, we're doing that together, and we're also involving some volunteer writers as well. The research has gathered an amazing amount of material, so we've got lots and lots to choose from, um, and it's divided into three main strands. We're going from very early history right through to the sort of heyday of Norwich and into its decline in Victorian times. That's one strand. Another strand is about the civic refurbishment of Magdalen Street in, in 1959. And then the third strand is oral histories, which we're taking from people talking about Anglia Square and their involvement in Anglia Square and that whole area and the pubs and clubs and the kind of more recent history of the area. Our show will, in the same way, be divided into three parts. And perhaps one of our challenges is just the wealth of material and the wealth of people that want to help and contribute. And that's a great thing, but at the same time, you have to know how to manage that and how to, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy, but we're, we're, we're going to manage it. Oh, all my trouble is forgotten. Well. Bunny nylons, Clifford. Yeah. Johnny! Yeah, me. Oh! Oh, Come and dancing, Well, darling. that's all. Take me back to when Michael and I were a call. Oh, I bet it takes you back, Day darling. before ten kids. <laughs> that's a nice one. Put that no, little logo in it. He's not smiling. I like that one. That's a really nice one. Ah, oh, gosh, at the moment working on press release and promotion of the launch of the creative response phase of our project, trying to work out how that phase is going to look, so the practicality of what workshops we can offer to volunteers. Simon and I have been talking today about having moving stages, so originally we thought about a suggested route taking people into the north of the city over the river and that we would have fixed staging at several points of the route. So next week I'm going to go and meet Rachel. Do you want to come with me and look at the space if we're viewing it as a potential? If route? it's got a nice safe floor and it's more than 25 by 25. Then. And I think we have got 40 to 50 people involved with the research activities and the research activities themselves have been so much more than we had originally planned. We're now launching the choir. We have no idea how many people will come into a choir, even practical things like if we're going to have 100 people turning up at the launch next Sunday, have we got enough tea bags? Mm. Some money, mm. but really not enough to do what we mm. now have the ambition to do. Even though it's much more money than and, we've ever had before. But that's creating loads of expectation. Yeah, and, it's and tension. It's causing huge amounts of stress for everybody. Yeah. The idea of the project that we began with the beginning of last year is a fantastic one. All of the people involved in delivering the project, all of the volunteers are amazing and the enthusiasm is fantastic, but the level of expectation is utterly overwhelming. And it's, I do this, the job alongside another existing job, and I have four children, and I'm working on this project seven days a week, and it's slowly driving me crazy. How far down is the chalk? I'll tell you, it's about 300 metres, it's about 1,000 feet <laughs> below your feet. All the way down, all the way down the chalk. And above the chalk, we've got sand and gravel, good strong sand and gravel. It's a layer about five metres thick. You can build on it. It's what Anglia Square is built on. I'm Matt, uh, I'm a geologist, and I'm part of the research group, and I'm in the early history, histories group. And my particular bit is actually the bit before people started living in the area, because I'm interested in the geology and the topography and the geography, the river that used to flow through the area and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's really interesting to bring this into general public awareness because it helps people connect better with the area where they live. And along the way, I've discovered all sorts of things as a result of this project, which I thought I would have known, but I didn't know. And that's been really interesting for me. So basically, over the last two months, we've been 
uh, gathering the researchers together here at Rainbird and they've been working in three groups on specific areas of the research. So we've got one area looking at the early history, so the pre-settlement landscape right up to the Baidika raids of the Second World War. Then we've got a group looking specifically at the planning decisions around why the square was built and how the square was built and what it was, how it was received when it was built and also the 1959 refurbishment of Magdalen Street, which came a few years earlier, which is an interesting thing to us, that the whole street was completely refurbished before they decided to smash through it with a flyover. So why did that happen? And what were the ideas of the time? And what were the, uh, you know, what were people writing letters to the paper about and that kind of thing? And then the last group is the oral history group. So that, that group have been identifying and recording oral histories with people who've lived and worked in the area over the last 40 years. The research has been very successful. We've got lots and lots and lots of material. It's still coming in, still some interviews to do, still some people to distill their research and put their summaries up on the shared drive that we've got. But it's, we've got a lot of material. The challenge now is kind of collating that material into something that other people can digest um, through our creative response phase, which is what we're just about to move into. I'm from Eastern Hungary. It's a place far, far away from me, but it's beautiful. Tonight is the launch event where we go public. Where the research is all done. You can see all the displays behind you. Uh, everyone has put a display together of their area of research, and we're sharing that with the public. And then we're trying to try and get people to join our choir and our cast and our crew tonight. So basically that's what's happening. I'm feeling really proud actually with all the work that's gone into this. Um, I'm feeling a bit nervous of the presentation and trying to get people involved, another layer of people involved, but I do like standing up in front of people, so I should be okay. Yeah, I'm so excited about tonight. It's, it's a great event. There's loads of stuff going on. Lots of people have brought all their research, as you can see behind me, and um, the public are coming. It's, yeah, it's really exciting. Choir are here and they're going to sing over the Water, which is um, a sort of radical socialist song, if you like, which is about the North City and the people that live there and the kind of mentality. So who are the Common Lot? The Common Lot is a theatre company that we started a few years ago. This is our mission. We want to make theatre that matters to people. Homegrown, accessible and everywhere and free. So we're really into this idea of breaking barriers for theatre. We don't necessarily want to do theatre in buildings. We want to do theatre in spaces that people can come and see. They can bring their kids. They can bring a picnic if they want. So this is really what we're about. First we research something and then we find ways of creatively responding to that. And then we realise something. In this case, a show, but a lot more than just a show. So we are at the end, really, of our research process, although some of our researchers are going to continue because they've got the bug, and we're just launching into this creative response, and that's what I hope you will help us with. My name is Jeanette Baxter, and I'm a, an academic and a researcher at Anglia Ruskin University, and I work in partnership with The Common Lot on developing community creative research projects, and we're presenting some of the research that we've been working on since December. In terms of, sort of gems, a, a lot of the sort of really lovely stuff that's been discovered has, has been through our young research who've been going on walks around Anglia Square and they've been learning how to take photographs and do sort of print art in response to the landscapes that they're seeing. So they've been re rediscovering uh, Anglia Square for themselves because many of them either didn't really know about Anglia Square or they just saw it as a quite a rundown part of the city. So the gem that's been discovered through the research is Anglia Square itself. We've done different information and research about the area of Anglia Square. And we've been doing stuff like taking photos of, of the area and learning how, how to do print making of, of it. We have also uh, written sort of newspaper articles about certain things that could happen to Anglia Square or did happen to Anglia Square. Wensom's been involved with the project because we really like to produce a curriculum that's engaging for our children. We try to be a little bit different we try to do things that are 
out there. We want, we want our children to be learning about their local area, their local history. We wanted to get involved in this because it's important to our children. Our children live in this community, the children have grown up there. I grew up in this community, I grew up just down the road from Anglia Square, so for me it was quite a personal sort of thing. So I was part of the oral history research group, so we've been going, taking interviews and there's kind of two areas to that really. First of all we've been um, trying to collect a, a set of 25 half hour interviews with people who've got memories of the area. Alongside that we've been doing Vox Pops in the city centre where we've just been asking one simple question, basically what do you think about Anglia Square? In that square area, a bit yeah. more, it's a bit dead really, the whole thing. One of my in-depth interviews was with somebody called Noah Salibo and Noah is um, a refugee from Sudan and he's lived in the area for the last three years. It was really interesting talking to him because Anglia Square was probably the first place he came to in Norwich and I said to him, Noah, what did you think about Anglia Square when you first came here? And he said he thought it was really beautiful. He loved the glass canopy, all the children playing around and he was so amazed that he could go into the pound shop and get five things for a five pound. So for him it's a really important place and we talked about how for his community, uh, Anglia Square is the centre of Norwich. You sang tonight, which was fantastic. Do you want to take part in the choir? Yes, uh, yeah, I've been taking part in the choir and hopefully songwriting as well. I just felt, even with Come You In, it was something I wished I'd been part of because it spoke to the community and I'm hoping to involve some people who are marginalised as well with me. Yeah, I think it went really well. There was a good number of people here and lots of interest and lots of warm applause. Uh, and lots of nice offers of things, so we'll see. We'll have a look tomorrow at all our notes and see how it, see who's put down for what. So, yeah, I'm pleased. Well, there's lots of faces I didn't recognise, which is nice. It's always a nice mix of people you don't know and people you do know. So, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it's it good to look out and see lots of familiar faces and lots of unfamiliar faces. It was, a, it was a good mix, yeah. It feels like this project has moved from there to there now, and we're in a different kind of territory now, yeah. Today is the open casting day, so we've asked people to come who've been singing in the choir and people who want to be in the cast and we've asked them to come on a Sunday afternoon, give up their Sunday afternoon to see if they, uh, how many we've got. And so hopefully by the end of the afternoon we'll end up with a, a number that we can be happy with. And yeah, and so when we get to Angus Square we're going to talk about Magdalen Street, a thriving shopping centre. We've got a big song called Shopping Week that we're going to sing now, all together. Then we're going to talk about, then we're going to tell stories of the bombing. <laughs> I'm beautiful, I'm powerful, or I have a secret. I'm powerful, 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 And if you feel like you need to move your position to get yourself seen, that's also fine. And then we we'll stop and we do another one. Warm, quick, spark, radical feminist. Go. No. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> free to turn down a pitiful wage. Free to die of starvation. If you don't always see us, you may not want to know us, and you probably wouldn't like us. But we are woven. I really like the principles behind the common law. I like the people who are in it. They made such good cakes for everyone to, to eat <laughs> there. It was just like, it felt like a really nice, really nice community. So uh, that was part of the reason I wanted to get involved. And I really enjoyed um, like being involved in production stuff when I was in, in high school still. But I just sort of fell to the wayside as I got older. And I wanted to get, I wanted to get back involved with it because it's just such an incredible feeling being on stage. I think what it was really about was just getting a, a bit of a gang atmosphere of everybody being a bit daft in the same place. It's really just, I suppose, for, for people like Simon and everybody else to get an idea of who fits what and you know, take it from there. Thank you.
theatre accessible and interesting and engaging and free is actually a political act. About 10 minutes beforehand, there was hardly anyone there, and then suddenly 60 people turned up, and we got lots of people we expected and lots of people we didn't expect. I don't like the word audition because we try, again, it's about being inclusive. Audition says you're good enough, but you're not. It, our challenge is to say, okay, all these people want to be included. What part can they play, either as a physical part on stage or as a part off stage? It's, it's about assessing people's contribution and helping people to make that contribution. So. You know, the audition process is not really an audition process. It's a process of going, OK, who's turning up on this Sunday afternoon because they want to do this? <laughs> you know, and then if they do that, that's all, you know, they're in. So there's no audition process, really. Uh, what were we looking for? Just people, because you can make theatre with anyone. So it's just the people that came were the people that were going to be the body of our engine, you know, and, and that's all we wanted. You know, I'm a massive fan of pantomime. And, and the reason I'm a fan of pantomime is because it will sell out any theatre. You know, and, and people who don't go to the theatre will go to the theatre once a year to see a pantomime. And that's, you know, what they think is, you know, that to them they think, oh, well, we don't go to the theatre, but we do go and see the panto. And that's because it's from the musical tradition. You know, it's talking to audiences, breaking the fourth wall, it's comedy, it's song, it, it, you know, vaudeville. And that is a grand folk tradition that we have. It, it, there's a direct engagement with the audience. So you've got to use, I think I've got to use, you know, these kind of vaudevillian tropes because they're directly appealing. They're not telling you you're thick. I'm Charlie and I'm the musical director and composer on Anglia Square, A Love Story. I've done several projects with The Common Lot already um, and I really enjoy working within the local community to help them create theatre based on that community. Um, so it's real, has kind of like a personal link to everyone involved. We've had an open access choir. So for about a month, we, we had four sessions where anyone could come along. And for all of those four sessions, we had around about 60 people um, in the Octagon Chapel in Norwich. They've been learning songs which we've written for, for this project, for Anglia Square, A Love Story. did I come along because I really really admire the work that Simon and the common lot does and or do I should say and I've been saying for ages I must go along to one of these uh, performances and join in and here I am and and learning the songs and meeting fantastic new people and doing different things and kind of trying to yeah just uh, learn it all and uh, hopefully be ready to do drama out in the street, which is a bit scary. But hey, what's to, what's to lose? What's what's not to do? What's not to enjoy? So just say it a few times through. I used to think, oh, Anglia Square. You know, what's to what's to love about Anglia Square? And Simon's always going on about how fantastic it is. But actually, when I think about it, and all the people that use it, and the fact that it's going to be knocked down, I, I thought, oh no, that's really sad. So, um, that's another reason why I'm here. We ran a couple of songwriting workshops. Uh, one was based primarily on writing words, and another one based primarily on writing music. And some people came to that workshop with, uh, we had one guy come with about five songs he'd already written. Uh, some people came wanting to write songs, but not knowing where to start. And some people came having a bit of a start at writing a song, but not knowing where to, how to continue it. So throughout these workshops, Mags, the writer, and myself, 
helped those people to develop those ideas and to take them into, a, to basically take them and make a full formed song out of those lyrics. So all the way down the streets from the Playhouse to Anglia Square, we've picked some little spots where people are going to stand and perform. And that's what this workshop is about, so that people can think about music, they can think about lyrics, it might be a performance, it might be a poem, it might be a piece of an installation, or a little mini play, or a song. And they're all bringing their own ideas to, um, to form their own little spots. I never want to hold a hot iron. Don't want my right hand chopped away. We're moneyers, which are people who made coins in the 10th century. And uh, we've got a little slot over there in the courtyard. And we basically are doing actions and singing and protesting about the uh, removal of hands of moneyers, which was a punishment in the 10th century. Now the population's shooting up. I reckon, with a little bit of jiggery-pokery, I can shove in some more! <laughs> You're tending to go down at the light. Each line gets sent up. It does. It sounds a bit weird, but it's the right thing to yeah, do. The, the, when we yeah, work with the RSC... Cool. <laughs> when we work with the RSC... <laughs> when we work with the RSC, we work with this voice coach who, I mean, Eve, you, you can vouch for this guy, he was unbelievable, wasn't he? He was yeah. unbelievable. And this is one of his exercises. He says that text should be exciting, surprising, and questioning. And if it's all of those three things, it sounds like it's just occurred to you. Yeah, oh, so yeah. it's exciting and surprising and questioning. I don't, you know, leaving it. So if you go down at the end of the line, it's like you've learned what the line is. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So let's just try the exercise one more time and try and be excited and surprised and questioned. Go! We call it the Little City! You can get anything you need right here! Frank Price's department store, you name it, we stock it. Ethel's House of Distinction, hats and hosiery from May to... Rise, Bruce, with crabs, you won't find better crab and funny crow Who's next? You. The mayor. Oh, shit! <laughs> no, that's not the yes! Mayor. So we've been working in Wensum, Mile Cross and George White primarily um, and we've been looking at BBC Voices doing interview techniques and recording, uh, Print to the People doing print workshops and screen printing and Sam Robbins, a local photographer who's been a professional photographer in the military and then that research work has culminated in exhibitions and conferences in the schools where they've had a chance to share their research and their creative outcomes. Particularly culminated in a conference at Wensum at the end of their research work with an exhibition of print and photography work and a chance for the children to stand up and present their ideas and their understandings and their thoughts about Anglo Square and the heritage of the area and also hold a debate on whether the the Anglia Square complex should be knocked down and redeveloped or not. So this term, all the children here at Wensum are working as historians, learning how to be researchers, learning to question historical evidence. So teaming up with the common lot, they've been researching Anglia Square and looking at the very current problems that it faces, its history, and today is a culmination of the end of history project of Anglia Square and they're presenting. We've got a debate going on whether Anglia Square should be knocked down or not so our children have been learning how to debate. We've had some children photographing some of the graffiti, some of the angles, some of the architecture and some really really powerful writing around the project as well. The children have the chance to explore texture, pattern, repetition and viewpoint. Um, so Sam Robbins looked at what he considered the sort of four basic ingredients and he talked them through the idea of creating a photograph like you might create a cake with key ingredients and if you've got all those ingredients in there in some relationship with each other you've got a, a 
an excellent photograph. He looked at the idea of getting them to see the familiar in new ways. So they started in a workshop looking at their classroom, but looking at where there are examples of texture or pattern and repetition in their classroom. And then we took them to Angler Square and they had the chance to actually take photographs of the area. And we had moments where children were lying on their back under benches or sort of leaning over bins and taking angles that they might not normally have seen and they might just normally have walked past. What did the children get out of working with Print to the People? They learned brand new skills in terms of printmaking and collaging. They also looked at ways of exploring how to present ideas in using juxtaposition, both juxtaposition of different images, of architectural images and texture, but also the opportunity to juxtapose and put next door to each other historic photos from the archive as well as photographs that they had taken. Today we're at Mark Cross Primary School running screen printing workshops as part of the Anglia Square Love Story project. And so today the kids are making at Robert Rauschenberg inspired prints. So they're printing their photographs over the top of each other in a sort of collage uh, fashion. And the idea is uh, Robert Rauschenberg took inspiration from stuff that was in the newspapers, current affairs, to make his screen prints. So the kids are effectively doing the same because Anglia Square is a current affairs sort of news story and they've made some really great work and they've been really getting into learning about screen printing. The first activity they're sort of having more of a discussion about Angler Square and what it means to them and issues that other people might have with Angler Square so they're really thinking about it as a sort of entity and what it might mean to the wider community and they're putting those ideas down um, as a sort of group collage using cutting and pasting from newspapers and photographs that they've taken and also stamping words and phrases that they've come up with and then the the second activity is a screen printing and as one student just said this she was sort of telling a story with her image um, printing like an old image of Angler Square taken in the past and her current image that she took. This is kind of like beginning to look like a building or a pathway. I've been involved with the project because of um, because we we love the idea of seeing the heritage and the history of the whole project and it's it's nothing as I thought it was going to be. It's far better in the richness and the depth of um, quality of the work the children have, um, are doing is just blown our minds. They've learnt about the, the visual aspect of Angler Square and the history. We've done, um, we've done walks around the Angler Square project. It's getting the idea of heritage so the children have seen it visually but now the screen printing today has just been exceptional. So they see their, they see their images, they see how it develops. We're just excited to see how it goes further with the poetry, the writing, the music and the performance. So as in terms of heritage for our area, it's just been exceptional. How is this tying into the Common Lot Theatre production? So the whole um, project so far in the schools has been about gaining a response to the area and a, an understanding of the area through their creative response and then that is going to go into drama and songwriting workshops to create pieces of music that will end up in the final production. Each of the schools we've been working in, their research will culminate in them creating a song with an entire year group so there'll be a choir of 60 or 90 children that have all composed and contributed to the song with Charlie and myself and then they will sing that in school at assemblies and to parents and things and then a self-selecting number of those children will join us during the production of Angler Square A Love Story and sing their song as part of our show. Um, they're going to be part of the entire production so they'll be singing uh, the introductory song from stage one and we're going through three different stages of the show um, then they're sort of following us throughout those stages and then they'll be singing the fin finale song of the show but during the middle of their show in what we're calling spots they will be singing uh, the song that they have composed. Good. Now we're going to be really loud and sing over the water. One, two, three, four. from Angel Road Junior School. Um, we've been lucky enough to take part in the Anglia Square project. Duncan and Charlie are here today. We're, writing, we're composing our song that we've written as a class. So Duncan came in last week and he did a workshop with the children where they talked about Anglia Square and what, what words they thought of when they thought about Anglia Square. They, they then took away the, what the children came up with and Charlie then wrote a song They've really enjoyed, I mean, they've written poems about Anglia Square, which, and that's all come from the writing of the song. Right, bigger, better, stronger, cleaner. Let's just try saying that. Bigger, better, stronger, cleaner. And again. 
you went like this. Bigger. Better. Stronger. Let's get bigger. Better. Stronger. Cleaner. Nobody cares The night of the true stories. Did you mm. did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a really good night. We had a full house at the Octagon. It was a lovely sort of personalised, much lower key event where we could bring our choir out for the first time. It was a nice thing to do, sort of a month out before the big show. A real sense of like this is coming now, and these are some of the stories we can tell. These little personal stories, but we're going to tell a much bigger story in, in a month's time. So it was a lovely little stepping stone to the bigger project. And it was a good partnership, you know, True Stories are great. It was another way of kind of deepening an awareness of the project and showing different perspectives on the area. And it was, it was a good thing, we'll definitely do that again. Many people don't know that Anglia Square is the centre of Old Norwich. So before anything was that side of the river, we had Northwick, which was north of the river, and the centre of that area was around the Anglia Square area. So we're using Anglia Square and our stories as an excuse to tell the story of the whole of the history of the north of the water. So this is like this, so I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is take myself to be in the back four, walking to Anglia Square. So we walk past the two pubs, I smell the beer. I'm really sad it's going to go. I love Anglia Square, it's always been there for me. Whether it's like shopping with the kids, or, or, or hanging out, or the Jackar, I mean the Jackar was a fantastic club. It, it, gutted that it's not going to be there, just gutted. <laughs> this upbeat song to play you out. It's called Shopping Week and it's inspired by a 1930s shopping brochure on Magnus. Thank you. The rehearsal schedule was like once in an evening in a week and one day a weekend from the first few weeks and then escalating. So towards the end it was kind of three or four nights a week. Did people cope with it? People always find it difficult. I always say to cast, you know, you're going to go through these processes where you've got to go to rehearsal and you just don't want to go. It's going to be a beautiful sunny afternoon or you're going to be knackered when you come home from work and you're just not going to want to go. You've got to resist that temptation to not come, you've just got to come. And so, you know, usually about two or three weeks out, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a crisis because people have been working hard, they've been turning up, I mean, they're enjoying themselves, but it just feels a bit much. And they have to go through that, they have to. If they don't know they've been working hard, they ain't going to create something brilliant. So, yes, people struggle sometimes, and we're as flexible as we can be, but largely, you know, they... They were a brilliant group of people and they just turned up and um, threw themselves in. Cement. Finishing. Bakers. Blossers. Skyers. Odd chasers. And that is a lot of old cobblers. Will you sit down and be quiet? What a load of sentimental old tripe. Some people are born to get left behind. Try to have a kind of real sense of those people. They were real people. They died penniless and starving. You know, we don't know anything about them, but it's helpful for you if you can imagine a person, somebody who looks like somebody you're close to, maybe. You know, and it's just this magic that happens when you, when you imagine something, it kind of translates through somehow more. So for each of those names, think of someone, get them in your heads, picture them. Harriet Spurgeon, handloom weaver, silk widow. Amy Martin, Handloom Wilbur, Silk, 81 years old, widow. 
I think with three weeks to go until the performance goes up, we are all really excited. There is such an unbelievable energy and I think sense that this huge team of people, over a hundred people, are all pulling together to make this work. But there are lots of unknowns and I think for many of us, there are, there are daily terrors about forgetting things, getting things wrong, elements that might not work, but we all, there is such a fantastic attitude within the common lot and I think everyone you speak to is always focused on we find solutions we don't make problems and as long as we can keep that attitude going then I think people are going to be in for a real treat. All right, I'm Nikki. <laughs> so I'm Nikki Turner I'm the stage manager for the common lot so I would call it the stage manager because we've got three stages to deal with. So this year has been a logistical nightmare, but a challenge to manage all the crew. And the crew have been a very special crew. There's about eight of us, and mainly women with a couple of men that joined at the last minute. It's a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of running between stages. We never get to see the, the spots, which is a real shame. But it's been a real bonding process for the crew and there are a number of crew who have anxiety issues and this has been absolutely brilliant for them as a confidence booster to actually feel that they have really made a difference to the show. Yes, so tonight is the dress rehearsal um, when we are going to run the whole show including the bits and the interval and everything as much as possible to time and in costume. It's very exciting and slightly nerve-wracking. We've got some great things. We have got a, for example, a 10th century money protesting about the mutilation of his hand. We've got the school children we will have on Thursday, the school children singing in Doughty's Hospital. We've got some of the choir singing the Loom song up at the Golden Dog Lane. We've got a punk band under the flyover. I'm so excited about that. Singing songs about Anglia Square. We've got the waiting of the Woodruff Dolls Hospital, which would be amazing to see all everyone dressed as dolls and teddy bears and with their broken eyes and noses. It's been really exciting. I've thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. It's been challenging, but um, really enjoyed the opportunity to get involved. You look amazing. Tell me about your outfit. OK, um, the outfit is a combination of lots of people's hard work. Uh, a friend and I made the skirt from a quilt cover and the bustle from a pillow. And the top is hired and uh, the hat is Mel's creation. I've been doing costume organising with the common lot for a few years now. I started with Boudicca, the pantomime, and then I did Come You In. And then when Simon said he was going to be doing Anglia Square, a love story, I said, oh, well, I definitely want to be in on it. I enjoy getting everybody dressed up in the costume so then they can really feel that they are they take on their personality of their character. Challenging because we've got several eras that we're costuming, but I am really looking forward to it. I've seen all of them apart from one. I just feel compelled to come and see them every time. And um, yeah, I can't keep away, basically. <laughs> and it's really nice because the show is different every night. You know, it's depending on the audience, depending on how many people there are. You know, it always feels different, depending how many pages of script they miss out. You know. Well, welcome. I am, you know, I am, as you know, your man. Uh, uh, and I am your humble bishop. <laughs> and I am the wife. Of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the 1850s, ladies and gentlemen. The great Queen Victoria is on the throne. But what he didn't tell you is the city's in a mess. Understatement of the year. Yeah, I bet he didn't tell you about that Industrial Revolution, did he? No, no. But how that's hit us workers hard. They don't give a cuss. They send us all to hell. Oh, he's just about so to I'm do playing that. the part of Susanna. And uh, she's a scarlet dye from Calvert Street. Her name's Susanna Woolbright. I think it's the real name. It's a real, it's a real person. Uh, and she's basically this troublemaker, rebellious spirit. In the audition, I read her part. I was like, oh, I really want to be this character because it suits me a bit too well. <laughs> General rabble rouser. We're struggling to put together a few coins for bread. We can't afford candles, and so the children are crying in the dark. Why must we starve while others roll in luxury? 
you feel the dynamic. I think we're just getting better and better, you know, and the more we start playing off each other and we start sort of engaging with our characters more and more with each other. And I'm, I'm really connected to her now. I sort of feel like it's a part of me and all the cast, they all call me Susanna as well. Like, it's really funny. <laughs> side of the water. Could be dangerous. Bucket, you know. You better make sure you've got no valuables in there. You may catch the oh, look at these people on these very fine know. horses. It's Whoa, no, there. Whoa. It's oh, cats. Cats are good for rats. Yeah, we'll let you in then. I have two lips for you. Ah, uh, Lord, that's the big one. Come, if you dare. There's nothing but sin and blasphemy that side of the river. <laughs> Keep your wallet safe, what you do your zips up and everything. It's a bit rough this side. Keep coming in, don't be shy. Let's go work start while it's not going. Well, it's our last performance tonight. How do you think it's been going? It's been going brilliantly, and although it would be like, would say that. It, it has, and it's been going better, I think, than anybody could even have envisaged. And I think it's for lots of reasons. The children in particular from the schools, um, there have been five schools involved, they have been superb. The common lot makes for theatre with people who do not make theatre, who, who haven't had that wonderful experience of coming together to go through the journey of making a play together and performing it and then getting that incredible buzz afterwards of making it. And what we try to do is make theatre that, that is accessible to anyone. So we really love this notion of the amateur, the amar, the person who loves. That's where it comes from, the amateur. And, and I think the status of the amateur, we need to raise the status of the amateur. Because people give so freely of themselves. So the common lot is giving freely, you know, giving of what we have into the lot of what we can own together. And the lot being our situation, our, you know, our problems and all the challenges that we have in society, but also the lot, which is the plot of land and the place in where we live, that lot. Once they've stepped over the line and said, yes, I want to do it, anyone and everyone can have the opportunity of the joy of making theater. And so it's really not a professional theater. It's an amateur theater and it's proudly amateur even though the key individuals, the key people who lead the project get paid, the notion is that it's about the lot of us. So it's an anti-professional theatre in a sense. Once you have love in the mix, you have, you have incredible possibility and great depth of resource. So it's really, really important that, and it's open and that we appreciate what anyone brings. Who was at what set? To achieve great things, we must dream as well as act. Beyonce? Yes! <laughs> we must embrace change! But where it is professional, and where I like to think we are professional, is that we have professional standards. So we, have, we, we strive to be brilliant. You can't... Amateur doesn't mean unprofessional in terms of standard. You have to ask people to raise their game right as high as it can go. And it will never be the standard of a West End musical where people have trained for three years and sing it every night and do it. But, but it will have a spirit to it that makes it as enjoyable as any posh, polished West End production because it has that spirit of locality and it has that spirit of, that people bring to it from their own heart. That is kind of a, maybe less slick, but certainly I think more directly engaging to an audience because people see themselves up there and that is worth its weight in gold. We don't want your pity. It's been a very warm show and the cast has really bonded well. And I now declare I'm going to get my mattress stuffed. My wardrobe's big monster. But Laurie's from Pokemon. I'm trying. I now declare You want to get yourself to bat me, darling. That suit is a fright. The songs particularly, I think everyone really loves singing them. You can see everyone come come alight when, when we start singing. And if somebody starts singing, everyone just kind of all joins in because they're so infectious. This is like when we're rehearsing and when we're getting ready, um, there's definitely a real sort of group ethos. So that's one thing that I like about being in the chorus. It's 
in the thick of it. Good evening. This street, your street, Morden Street, my friend, Street, is an ordinary English street. This play is really important for Norwich. It's igniting a debate, so people are going away, and that question that's posed at the end of the play, which is, I can have an opinion, and I can stand up, and I can say something about where I live, and, and make my opinion count. Frank Price! You're down for demolition! What? On your mic! That's family business! We've been here for generations! The shows have been going absolutely spectacularly. I think it's blown everybody away. The most amazing thing is the amount of people from all over the county, I think, that have come, and the amount of feedback we've had. It's all amazing, absolutely amazing. So as you can imagine, we are enjoying it intensely, and we're deeply sad that this is our last show, really. What a weird changes in the air. After it all, I, I feel um, I feel a bit, bit the, the, the black dog coming down, and I'm um, what am I going to? Where will I go when we're not doing this no more? It's all over. It's been brilliant. What more can I say? It's been wonderful. I thought it was very moving. I learned a lot about this area of the city that I didn't know before. Yeah, it was fun. It was engaging. It was nice to see kids engaging with history. Yeah, and it was, it was moving. The end was really moving. You shall tell.